after providing videos to the community from getting Direwolf set up and running on a Linux system from absolutely nothing all the way to fully configured and using a uh, Zaster or Yak, I've been asked if I could provide the same type of granularity in setting up a Yaitsu radio on FL Digi, starting with the computer, assuming nothing has been done on the computer to uh, getting the radio up and running. Now I've written software previously to uh, get these uh, FT817s running on Commodore 64s, uh, a Perl uh, library on CPAN, as well as a uh, Perl-based front end, uh, but I've never provided any videos with simply getting it running on FL Digi, so I figured this would be an appropriate time to do so. And this video is going to simply be about getting the CAT interface up and running on FL Digi. It's not going to be about audio or anything else. Everything that's required, permissions, configurations within Linux, and configurations within FL Digi itself, that's it. And what I'm going to require is obviously the laptop with a version of FL Digi, the FT817, a USB to serial converter that uh, is Linux compatible, and a CAT cable that is made for the Yaitsu FT817. Uh, some people have CAT cables like I do with a nine pin serial interface, and some of them have CAT cables that have the uh, uh, USB serial adapter built in. If that's the case, the USB serial adapter should be one that supports Linux or this is not going to work. For those not familiar, the other side of that CAD cable uses this style connector. It is the 8-pin that goes in the ACC connector. There's only one CAD configuration on the 817, and by holding in the function key, you can see that it's number 14. Turning the selection knob will obviously take you to 14. That's the board rate. And you could use 9600 or 38.4. It's really up to you. Uh, given the uh, two options, I would choose 38.4 for my laptop. Uh, I use uh, 4800 and 9600 when I'm working on stuff for the Commodore and the Apple II, uh, given the board rate limitations. But 38.4 is what would be appropriate for FL Digi. So I'll save it right there. It's not going to do us any good if we don't know if the uh, USB to serial interface works with Linux. So what you're going to want to do is open up a terminal, uh, however you have a particular setup for opening a terminal in Linux. And you're going to run DMESG, right? Right now, I haven't yet plugged it in, so I'm going to plug it in now. I'm going to give it just a second. I'm going to run DMESG again, and we can see that it has changed since the last time I ran the command and this device has been attached as TTY USB 0 and this is a uh, prolific technology uh, PL2303 USB adapter. So this is Linux compatible. We should be able to see this in the uh, appropriate directory. So let's take a look at the device directory and see what we got. We can see the device is there in the dev directory, but it's owned by root in the group dialout. We're going to need to add the user that we're going to use with FL Digi to the dialout group. If you're using Ubuntu like I am, it's really simple. We could just do sudo add user. In my case would be Jordan, because that's me, and then dialout. Type in our uh, password for sudo. You can see that in my case, um, I'm already a member of Dialout, but if I wasn't a member of Dialout, Jordan would be added to that group, allowing my account to have access to the USB serial device. The next order of business is to go to Google and Google FL Digi FT817 dot xml as shown right here when you search for that the first result that'll come up is a link that looks just like this from this website go and click on this link and it'll bring up an xml file the xml file as it appears should be saved to your computer 
This is generally done depending on your web browser by clicking uh, a right click, subject to that effect, and clicking Save As, and then saving it to a Documents folder. You can see in my Documents folder I have two of them saved already, one for the 817 and one for the 450. But there they are saved because we're going to need them for the next step within FL Digi when we configure this radio. When I said I would start with a brand new version of FL Digi, I was serious. If you're using Ubuntu, you can do an uh, apt-get install FL Digi, such as apt-get install FL Digi. I'm not, I'm not going to do this. I already have it installed. You're going to have to be sudo in order to do that. Um, I've done that. I'm using the uh, version of FL Digi that comes with Ubuntu. Be that as it may, once it's installed, if you're setting up devices like this via uh, USB, you've probably been given an icon uh, that you can uh, click on. But if you're turning it on for the first time, you probably want to run it from the command line so you could see any errors that are going to appear if there's an issue. And that's why I just like to type in FL Digi right from the command line just like this and I'll hit enter and we see that on the very first run we get to the uh, configuration wizard I'm not going to go through the configuration wizard I'm going to get right to um, the uh, rig portion of this I'm just going to hit finish and this is FL Digi with zero configuration whatsoever and I'm going to go to configure rig control rig cat and the first thing that I'm going to do is I have two choices here I could use uh, TTY USB 0 which I'm going to do and I'm going to choose the file that I just downloaded previously it's in the documents folder in my case FT817 the other choices of of course, Hamlib, which I will get into later, but right now we're going to use RigCat, right? So I'm going to choose this, this FT817, USB 0, and I'm going to set the board rate for 38.4. Everything else I'm going to leave as default. I'm going to click the Use RigCat button, and I'm going to hit Initialize. Now, an observation can be made of the radio. When looking at the radio and then looking at the screen, we can see if the radio synced up with the screen by looking at the frequency. If that's also the band. If that's the case, we know that this has worked. I could then go and change the frequency on the radio. I could then go and change it to uh, upper side band and what have you and do all the things that I need to do to show that this is now working properly. Uh, this is finished. RigCat is done. Everything's working just fine. You can ensure that the uh, software push to talk is working correctly. Uh, first of all, ensuring that you have an antenna or dummy load connected to these radios as they're quite susceptible to SWR. Turning your um, uh, power level all the way down and simply clicking on the transmit receive button just to toggle it right so I click on it and we can see the radio went to transmit and I click on it again and then it shuts back off and as the radio went red and back to green we see that the push to talk is working just fine with an FL Digi. Should you choose to use ham live instead of FL rig you could go to configure rig control and obviously you would have to deselect RigCat and go to HamLib and select that one. The correct serial port will have to be chosen. That's USB 0. And the rig will have to be chosen from the list. This will be down in Y. FT817. Everything else will be left as default. We 
could see that using Hamlive, everything operates normally as it should. I can go over to the transmit receive and toggle. So the push to talk works as well. And Hamlive is now functioning instead of RigCat. So it is also operating normally. So there you have it. There's an FT817 connected to FL Digi via RigCat or Hamlive. Uh, working just fine. No issues whatsoever. And that's going to conclude this video. Big shout out to the 147-120 repeater in Longwood. KJ4TLB. Thanks for watching.